Hey YouTube, um, I'm going to try to make a little longer of a video this time. Um, I've got a few that I want to make, it's just trying to squeeze them in. Um, but this one is going to be, uh, I hear so many times the witnesses say that their past isn't relevant or it doesn't matter, or they just try to, to poo poo it away. And it, it absolutely does matter because most of what you practice today came from your previous leaders. And I can uh, just give you a little rundown of the history of, um, of your leaders. Uh, I'm sure you know or should know about Charles Taze Russell. He was not the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses. He was the founder of the International Bible Students. And here's some just some quick things about him. Um, he was the founder of Zion's Watchtower in 1879 and the Watchtower Society in 1881. So after his death in 1916, many Bible students did not want to support the new leadership, being Joe Rutherford. They wanted to stay frozen in time with only Russell's teachings. Others wanted to work with the new president and make changes. So in 1931, they embraced the new name Jehovah's Witnesses. So here's a question for you. If you just got your name Jehovah's Witnesses in 1931, why wasn't it called that from the beginning of time? Why did it just pop up in 1931? So that's a point. And here are some of the things that Russell did. He celebrated birthdays and Christmas, tolerated his followers who were in the army. He did not consider Acts 1520 a permanent prohibition against eating blood. He allowed his followers to attend other churches and believed in the historic cross of Christ. Russell also believed in worshiping Christ, though he rejected his deity. And the American flag could be displayed under Russell. This is all under Russell. So then, after he passed away, Joseph Rutherford, they called him Judge Jobs, he was judge for a day or something. He was the legal counsel first for the Watchtower, and then he became the second Watchtower president. He was January 6, 1917. He, Rutherford, age 47, was elected second president of the Watchtower Society, unopposed at the Pittsburgh Convention. Rutherford banned the celebrations of birthdays and holidays of pagan, disfellowshipped those who joined the military or attended other churches, banned the use of blood and rejected the cross as a pagan symbol, saying that Christ died on an upright stake. The American flag was not to be displayed or saluted, so you can see why there was a problem there and a lot of the uh, international Bible students, they broke off. So um, by 1930, the majority of the brethren who worked closely with Pastor Russell had left the society Many had been forced out. And by this time, all of Pastor Russell's writings were discarded in favor of the writings of Rutherford, writings that contradicted each other. Imagine that. By 1929, over 100 changes in doctrines had been made. The society no longer resembled that which was established by Pastor Russell and his early associates. Society had a new look and a new attitude. No longer was it simply a publishing house for the dissemination of Bible literature. Now it was, and this is in quotes, God's theocratic organization. To disagree with it was tantamount to treason against God himself. So um, this is, I just started finding this stuff out about the, uh, how they, the Jehovah's Witnesses, really don't like Catholics, they don't like the military, they don't like the government, they don't like politics, they, they, it's just, it just goes on and on and on, but I just found that out after I found out a lot of other things about the Jehovah's Witnesses, and then I, I just said, I have to know why, I, it just doesn't make any sense, like you can't have a conversation with a witness without them mentioning something about the Catholics, or Christendom, which Christendom is not really what they say it is. They, uh, 
Christendom is, hold on just one second, worldwide body or society of Christians or the Christian world. So if Jehovah's Witnesses claim to be Christians, then you're part of Christendom then. But they, the meaning for them is that they call Christendom false Christianity that allegedly comes from Satan the devil, but that is not the true meaning of Christendom. So just saying they are, by their own definition of calling themselves Christians, they are also in Christendom. So in some of the things that I can see where a lot of the uh, hatred and just bad stuff comes and um, it was a lot of it was from Rutherford and uh, he in 1917 Rutherford had the finished mystery published as a seventh volume of the studies in the scripture series. It was advertised as Russell's posthumous work after he died and last legacy, but contains several interpretations and viewpoints not espoused by Russell, including an urging of all Bible students to cast judgment upon Christendom and its clergy, the, adopt the adoption of new dates for the fulfillment of particular prophecies, a claim that salvation is tied to membership within the Watchtower Society, as well as shunning and censoring any who reject the interpretations given in the volume or related articles in Zion's Watchtower magazine. So, the trend toward a growing alienation from and even hostility towards the world culminated in Rutherford's reinterpretation of Romans chapter 13, published in the Watchtower June 1st and June 15, 1929. Here Rutherford insisted that the higher authorities to which Christians should subject could not be the earthly authorities. These higher authorities, he argued, had to be God and Christ. This only increased the Bible students' hostility towards the secular state, which was now openly denounced as demonic. Okay, then in 1918, U.S. Attorney General Thomas Watt Gregory condemn the Finnish mystery as one of the most dangerous examples of propaganda, a work written in extremely religious language and distributed in enormous numbers. And warrants were issued for the arrest of Rutherford and seven other Watchtower dictator directors who were charged under the 1917 Espionage Act of attempting to cause insubordination, disloyalty, refusal of duty in the armed services, and obstructing the recruitment and enlistment service of the U.S. while it was at war. And on June 21st, seven of them, including Rutherford, were sentenced to 20 years imprisonment. Now, he, they ended up getting out, but you can just kind of see how this whole hatred thing is kind of evolving, and it just didn't, just didn't come out of the blue, didn't come out of nowhere. So another interesting thing about Rutherford was, or, yeah, Rutherford, he was a... Uh, when he was going to work his way through college, he was a door-to-door -door encyclopedia salesman. Now, I just find that very, uh, it just kind of stands out to me that, you know, he was a, saw how lucrative that was, and probably that was one of the reasons why they have door-to-door. -door. But, okay, so <clears throat> after securing the headquarters complex, and the sex corporate entities, Rutherford turned his attention to the rest of the organization. By gradually replacing locally elected elders with his own appointees, he managed to transform a loose collection of semi-autonomous, democratically run congregations into a tight-knit tight -knit organizational machine run from his office. <clears throat> Some local congregations broke away, forming such Russellite splinter groups as the Chicago Bible Students, the Don Bible Students, and the Layman's Home Missionary Movement, all of which continues to this day. But most Bible Students remained under his control, and Rutherford renamed them Jehovah's Witnesses in 1931 to distinguish them from these other groups. And then after that, he started, he shifted the sext 
emphasis from an individual character development that Russell had stressed to vigorous public witnessing work distributing the society's literature from house to house. By 1927, this door-to-door -door literature distribution had become an essential activity required of all members due to fail or the falling membership. The literature consisted primarily of Rutherford's unremitting series of attacks against government, against prohibition, against big business, and against the Roman Catholic Church. He also forged a huge radio network and took to the airwaves, exploiting populous and anti-Catholic sentiment to draw thousands of additional converts. His vitrolic attacks, blurring from portable phonographs carried to people's doors and from the loudspeakers of sound cars parked across the churches, also drew down upon the witness mob violence and government persecution in many parts of the world. So that just kind of gives you a little... Uh, insight into you can see where a lot of these things that came from Rutherford they still do today and it's not like I said it's not uh, anything I mean they found scriptures to align with these things but they're really I think came a lot of 99% of it came from Rutherford and let's see I'm gonna find some more stuff in here I got a lot of notes Okay. So we all know he he published a lot a lot of books and I've been reading some of them and you can't pick up a book or a booklet without seeing either hierarchy or Roman Catholic or Catholic in in them somewhere. So but um he expanded his means of spreading the Watchtower message in 1924 with the start of a 15-minute radio broadcast, initially from WBBR based on Staten Island and eventually via a network as of, a, as, of as, as many as 480 radio stations. A 1931 talk was broadcast throughout North America, Australia, and France, but his attacks on the clergy resulted in both the NBC and BBC radio networks banning his broadcast. So he, well that's kind of most of what I wanted to go. I mean I want to go over um, this booklet that he actually wrote which is called uh, unveiling, let's see, unfolding fifth column. What a fifth column is, is uh, so any group of people who undermine a larger group from within, usually in favor of an enemy group or nation. The activities of a fifth column can be overt or clandestine. So this is uh, this term is also extended to organized action by military personnel, clandestine. Fifth column activities can involve acts of sabotage, disinformation, or espionage executed within defense lines by secret sympathizers with an external force. So the all of the uh, Watchtower officials, like I said earlier, they got released and the rulings against them reversed, but the harshness of this period would mark Rutherford for the rest of his life, and it was a decisive influence on his religious decisions later. Persecution would also become a very important topic during and after World War II, when the Jehovah's Witnesses were subject to the harshest persecution by Nazi authorities in Germany and the occupied countries. So they say Rutherford emerged from prison in 1990 bitter against the world and the collusion he saw between the clergy and military that had sec secured his imprisonment. So he blamed the clergy and the military for him having to go to prison. And he also got sick while he was in prison, which ended up he eventually died. But soon after his release, he coined the term Satan's organization to refer to the supposed conspiracy. 
In Watchtower articles, Rutherford was similarly scathing towards big business, politics, and the League of Nations. They describe his attitude towards the clergy, clergy, his avowed enemies, as unadulterate hatred. His attacks on clergymen, particularly those of the Catholic Church from the late 1920s, were strong enough to attract a ban on his broadcasts which condemned his rabid attack upon organized religion and the clergy. So that kind of, uh, and also, also, yeah, yeah, Rutherford, speaking of Armageddon, Rutherford seemed to relish his descriptions of how completely the wicked world would be destroyed at Armageddon, dwelling at great length on the prophecies of destruction. He claims that towards the close of his ministry, Rutherford spent about half of each year's watchtowers writing about, organi about Armageddon. So he was kind of obsessed with not only the Catholic Church, but Armageddon. So um, in my next video, I'm actually going to read the fifth column booklet. I, have, I actually have the booklet. It's really old and frail. And I uh, downloaded a scan of it on the internet. So my next video, I'm going to booklets only about 35 pages, but you'll see what I mean about the hatred and the where some of these attitudes came from in this book. And I've got other books too that I want to go over. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.